Hello friends, Kurt Berglund with a disheveled look this morning. Uh, we are here today to uh, walk through and demo a new game by Greg Sovan, the creator of Fall Classic and Playball and Pegboard and something else, but I'm forgetting it. And so today we have his newest creation, Field Day. Now on my channel is a uh, sort of an introduction to Field Day. If you haven't seen that, you may want to take a look. Uh, the But this will go into more detail than that uh, video did. If you've not subscribed to my channel, I need your subscriptions to keep my channel going, so I do appreciate it and to click like and do all that fun stuff. All of the ordering information for Field Day Baseball, which is what we're showing you today, uh, is uh, in the description below uh, in, for this video. Um, the download for the rules, the charts, a couple of teams, uh, a score sheet and a tutorial that goes into a good amount of detail about how to do the game. Uh, that's all free on Greg's site, and I'm going to link it below. The 1961 season, which is available now, it's the first season that's available, and there's lots more coming. If you know Greg's work, you know that he works very, very quickly, and so I'm sure there's lots more coming soon. The 1961 download is $19.97, and if you want that printed, uh, it's $49.97. Uh, the rule book and charts printed are $9.97, and there is a fast action deck for the game, which is optional, but you can get it uh, in printed form as well, and that is $19.97. But again, all of that is going to be in the description for the video for you to check out. All right, so with no further ado and apologies about the condition of my voice today, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but anyway, uh, let's get to how to do field day baseball. Thanks for joining me. All right, this is your cover page for the field day uh, instructions. First thing you see on page one is a description of the game and the batter's card. The game is, um, the, the cards that you get for the game, and we're gonna look at those in just a minute, are for the hitters. And then the pitching is handled in a slightly different way. Everything is defined for you here as far as a sort of a glossary. And then the typical outcomes are laid out here. So the instructions are really good. The thing that I like about Greg's work, most of all, I think, when it comes to instructions, is that you can tell that he understands how people learn. And so that's laid out for you in a very clear uh, way with lots of examples. The next page, page two, to handles how pitchers are dealt with uh, in the game and how pitchers have an impact uh, on the hitter outcomes. All right, uh, there are a couple of different ways to handle the pitching, and those are laid out for you as well. Uh, there is an advanced uh, pitching system, there's regular and there's advanced, so you can choose kind of what works for you. Um, the next important part, page three, is devoted to defense, error ratings, uh, and then the... Um, the uh, range ratings on here as well, as well as assists and a little bit of how base runners advance on risk. Uh, page four is about base running and base stealing. And so that is laid out for you in a pretty concise way as well. You've got some options as, as terms of strategy uh, playing it safe, running with risk. Um, and you also have those runners who kind of go crazy and run until they are thrown out on the bases. 
Uh, and certainly being a Brewer fan, um, Jonathan VR and Carlos Gomez come to mind, but uh, they are called reckless runners, and some of those guys get special ratings in the game as well. That's kind of unique. All right, then uh, we get a um, sort of a hodgepodge of other stuff that doesn't fall under uh, any other category. We have hit and run. We have injury ratings. We have the infield and outfield in and uh, ballpark effects and what are called the field day charts that we're going to go into in more detail in just a moment. Then there are miscellaneous rules. Uh, for specific role outcomes uh, and a reminder about uh, range ratings here and how some of that works as well. That's it. Six pages take care of the rules and pretty much everything is organized per page. Um, page seven, which is the last page of rules, is like a tutorial on how the fast action cards work. I don't consider these rules. I think the, the rules are done in six pages, and I think that's kind of amazing. Uh, so uh, this is all about the fast action cards and how to use them if you choose to do so. If you don't, of course, you skip that section. All right, I wanna go over a few th other things about the game. The charts are pretty minimal in this game. Um, but I want to highlight a few things. Um, there is a single page devoted to sacrifice bunt and hit and run strategy, uh, options. And so the rules for that are broken down in the instructions, but they're also here on a separate page. So if you're a hit and run or a person who likes to bunt a, a, a fair amount, You've got some, uh, a very digestible way to look at uh, both of those uh, options. You'll note that the sacrifice bunt has two different ways to handle it. There's an easy way and then there's a more detailed fashion uh, offered for you as well. So that's a page of strategy reminders. This page is called the run on arm chart. And so what you'll see when we look at the cards is that there are moments when you can try and advance on the arm. Now, if you're using the FACs, the fast action cards, that takes care of this for you. But if you're not, uh, the simple run on arm chart to advance an extra base on a single or a double, um, the rules are described for you here in this green box. The chart, the, the two charts are here. One is simple, one is advanced, depending upon which one you'd like to use. And then in certain cir circumstances, uh, rundowns occur. When there is a cutoff throw, uh, they throw behind the runner and have a chance to get them out on a rundown. So there, this is part of this system as well. So there's simple, advanced, and then rundowns. This is all on a single page. All right, next is the runner advancement chart. Now, this could be, this section is for uh, ground outs to each of the different spots on the infield. Short, third, second, first, catcher, and pitcher. And then this column is for runners advancing on a flyout. This is the only thing you need to do. And notice that the work is done uh, with the ratings of the runners uh, and where the hit goes or the out goes. There are the runner ratings. And in some cases with a D6, one of the things that you'll notice about field day baseball very, very quickly is that Greg's system here is a 2D6 system. So it's, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but one of the things that I want to say about this is that 
uh, you will notice that it's not a quick play game, but it plays quickly, if that makes sense. So you're resolving most of your stuff here with one roll and you got two D6s. So when you look down this column on the runner advancement chart for infield outs, um, you're able to do it with the roll of one D6 to accommodate that in those circumstances where it happens. Then at the bottom, you have runner, uh, you have line outs handled down here and then optional uh, distributions, you can get uh, a wider spread of uh, putouts on things like pop-outs uh, down in this right corner and trail runners are dealt with there as well. But basically this whole page is about runner advancement. And so it's very, very helpful that he was able to do that onto one page. And that's it. In terms of charts, you've basically got, um, you got two. You got one to run on the arm, and you got a runner advancement on outs chart. Everything else is pretty much handled on the cards. These pages in the rule book deal with rolls 51, 52, and 53, which are particular defense checks very quickly you'll find yourself not needing those i've played uh, i don't know seven or eight games of field day and uh, i'm kind of getting close to that point so you're told here what happens if a put out is made with runners on base if you roll a 51 52 or 53 for 51 with your two d6s again so you roll a 51 with your 2d6s, you're going to do an error check. This goes through which position is involved. And then this is the process. If you roll a 52, there's a single plus an error check. These are the positions involved. If you roll a 53, it's a range check. So you have to get to the kitchen smell for gas, and then proceed with what to do here, your process and your positions uh, are taken care of. So how do you do those things? Well, if you're doing an error check, this is your sheet to look at for error checks. It's dependent upon where, what the hit is and what the position is that's involved. All right, but you're not re-rolling, you're just looking for the appropriate text. For dice roll 54, these are what are called the field day charts. Um, the field day charts um, do, you can use the fast action cards uh, instead of a re-roll but you're gonna do your D6s again. A second D6 roll, first D6 roll to get you to 54. You roll a 54, then you're gonna roll again to determine what the result of the play is. Okay, and that's two pages depending upon where the base runner or base runners, plural, are. Okay. And so in this walkthrough, you have now seen everything there is to see for charts and instructions. So let's get down and play some field day baseball. Every team has home and road uh, charts that demonstrate where, what the um, defensive ratings are, where the players can play. So for example, this is laid out like a baseball field. So your left fielders are here, center fielders are here, your right fielders are there. Third base, shortstop, second base, first base. This is the 61 Cincinnati Reds. All right, your catchers are down here. So 
All of your pictures are listed here. I didn't set my margins wide enough when I printed, and so it looks like it's chopped off a little bit, but not enough to stop us from doing what we need to do. You get the information in green here. Tells you how many, how many games each player played at that position. They are ranked in order for each position by the number of appearances they made at that spot. So, for instance... For the 61 Reds, Eddie Casco played 112 games at shortstop. Leo Cardenas played 63. Casco is ranked at the top. Cardenas is second. And so on. All right, so that is your listing. This is, if you want to think of it this way, this is a roster sheet. It contains all the players in the set for the Cincinnati Reds. Some of them are repeated. So for example, Frank Robinson is listed in left because he played there as well as in right field for the Reds. Casco did the same thing. He appeared at, I don't know, three or four spots, short, second, third, I guess that's it, uh, for the Reds. So these are your defensive position players. Uh, their range is rated. Then their specific um, error outcomes are here, and um, your charts are there for each base runner advancement. Um, in the lower right corner, you get your uh, Pythagorean one loss record for the Cincinnati Reds was 83 and 71 in 1961. They outperformed their Pythagorean formula by 10 wins. You can tell because they give you the managers. He gives you the manager's name and the team record there. Your ballpark effects are accounted for in the bottom right corner of each page and are listed in green at the bottom when ballparks come into effect. Finally, your pitchers. Now, the information that you need, uh, the pitchers are, are statistical information is in black. So you get their name, they get an asterisk if they throw left-handed. Their games, their games started, their complete games, their innings pitched, win-loss saves, uh, and then their and shutouts and their earned run average. Then the rest of this data is for uh, use in the game. So as you're rolling the sim, these this is where you will look, and these are your numbers to consult, because these numbers are used to impact the batter outcomes. So there isn't a pitcher card per se. You're using this chart, this sheet, uh, which helps you with, first of all, um, knowing, having all the pitchers together, number one. Number two... If you roll a number and this no and this sheet is out, you roll a number and you need to do some kind of a range check, then or an error check, or you're gonna have uh, you're gonna try and take an extra base and you're going to use the run on arm chart. Well, in that case, you got all of your defensive stuff right here as well. So what I do when I'm playing the game is I will have the uh, cards, the batter cards, right here next to the pitcher's ratings for when I roll. And this is what my tabletop looks like. I've got my my pitcher, my, my batter cards are set up right below my pitcher line so that I can easily find the numbers that I need. And... All I have to do is look up, and there are all my defensive ratings that I might need as well. The footprint for this game is pretty small. Uh, now, you may need to consult your charts. For instance, if let's say if you roll a, I don't know, you roll a, a 51, and you don't remember exactly what that is, so you're going to look here. Okay, so you've got that off, off to the side. Or maybe you uh, are going to have a runner try to advance, or you're not sure if the runners advance on a particular kind of out. 
Notice the wonderful use of color here as well. Um, boy, that's not used enough by people setting up charts for games. Uh, really helps the learning process, the memory process. It's just fantastic. And uh, Greg understands that as well in his other games. If you've seen his other work, you'll know that uh, you'll know that that's the case. So this is what the footprint looks like. Um, so what we're going to do now is to walk through a uh, some batters so that you'll see how everything works for the game. And we're going to say that the Cincinnati Reds are hosting the Los Angeles Dodgers of 1961 vintage. And of course, these were two of the major contenders in 61. Uh, the Dodgers, of course, were actually predicted by most of the pundits to uh, win the pennant in 1961. And the fact that the Reds were able to beat them was uh, very big news and a continuing story as the season went along. So this is a really interesting season to play. There's so much more to the 1961 season than Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle. Um, anyway, if you don't know a lot about it, I really encourage you to take a look. All right, so we're going to suppose that we've got the Dodgers coming up, and this is going to start our demo of how at-bats are resolved. So to start the demo, the first thing we want to do is to sort of make a distinction about your regular and advanced approaches to pitching in the game. You have two ways to go. Um, there are four main ratings for the pitchers rated zero to six. Lower is better except the K rating where higher is better. Hit controls singles and doubles on rolls 31 to 36. Walks controls walks on 41 to 46. Sorry, BB controls walks on 41 to 46. K controls strikeouts, 56 to 65, and homers control homers on 55. For example, the hit rating gives th give three gives up a single to Richardson on dice rolls 31, 32, 33. It stops hits on 34 and 35. We'll look at that. The regular grades are is a set of one-digit grades. The optional grades are line is refined down to tenths. All right, so I'm going to bring this up here so you can see it in more detail. The regular grade is at the top. So the hit grade here uh, for this pitcher is a three. The walk is a two. The home run is a two. The strikeout is a four and so on. For advanced grades, 2.5 for hits, 1.7 for walks, 4.4 for homers, and 3.6 for strikeouts. You say, well, what is that? What, what is all that? What does that mean? Okay, so the advanced line, this is optional. You don't have to do this. The advanced line requires every pitcher to do his own pre-roll called the bullpen session to determine his stuff for the day. Use a D10 die for this roll and treat it as a decimal number. For example, a D10 a roll of 4 is equal to 4 tenths. Add the D10 decimal plus the decimal grade. If it adds up to the next whole number, that is his grade for the game. There's no rounding. Use one roll for all four grades. If a D roll of 10 roll is a 4, then adding 4 tenths, you get to this pitcher you add four tenths, so his 2.5 goes up to 2.9. You don't round up, so his hit number would be a two for that game. The 1.7 would go to up to a 2.1, so that his walk number would go to a two for that game. The home run number is a 4.4. It would go up to a 4.8, um, I'm sorry, for the home run number. It would go from a 4.4 to a 4.8. And by the way, all of this is listed for you 
The home run grade goes from 4.4 to 4.8. You don't round, so it's a four. The K rating goes 3.6 goes to 4.0 and is a four for the game. If the K rating reaches seven, then dice roll 16 also becomes a strikeout. That is available to you as well. So this is a sort of a uh, advanced option to determine what kind of stuff the pitcher has that is sort of reminiscent of fall classic baseball, uh, Greg, one of Greg's other games. Okay. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to stay on the regular line to keep things um, simple. And it's certainly using the advanced line is something that you can do as you go along. Okay, so we're going to take some rolls now for the Dodgers batting against left-hander Jim O'Toole of the Reds. Uh, sort of the co-ace of the staff in 61, along with um, right-hander Joey J. All right, so we're going to have Tommy Davis coming to bat. We have Jim O'Toole's uh, major numbers here, two for hit, three for walk, one for homer, four for strikeout. We may need those as we go along. And uh, we will take a look at our player outcomes. Now, everything starts with the player card, but you're going to need to consult these pitcher outcomes. So there is batter-pitcher interaction because the outcomes are determined in large part not by re-rolls on this card, but they're determined by the pitcher ratings. So I'll give you an example of that. If you're looking at um, Tommy Davis, and let's say for, for, for example that we um, roll a 41. So we're gonna take my black die as the tens digit, and we're gonna take my white die as the ones digit, and we roll a 41. And it says base BB, base on balls, a walk, but a question mark. How do we decide if there is a walk to Tommy Davis? Well, you decide if there's a walk not by, as you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to reach for my D20, or I'm going to re-roll my D6. No, you're not. What you're going to do in that case, if you roll the 41, is you're going to look at the uh, pitcher walk number. In this case, it's a three. So if the walk number falls between in this range, then he draws a walk. If it does not, then he flies out to left field. Okay. All right, so let's do uh, some more examples. If you're looking, first of all, let's get familiar with the batter card for a moment. We're gonna look in, in detail here at the batter card so that you see kind of how these are laid out. The runner rating is in the upper left corner. Here's an example of a reckless runner. Veda Pinson is very fast. He has the X with the exclamation mark, but then he also has the registered trademark symbol, and that is the sign of a reckless runner. So we have our runner ratings in the upper left corner, which way the batter bats, the team name, and then your stats are in the bottom in black, along with your uh, batter splits, and then your uh, Defensive ratings that you need are listed here as well for um, range and for arm strength, assist possibilities uh, are listed in red. I'm looking here at, for instance, at Frank Robinson's outfield numbers. His assist is in red. 
you have his, he played some third base, which I guess I forgot, in, um, not well, but he played it in uh, 1961. And uh, here's another example of an outfielder, Veda Pinson, with his uh, range and error numbers and assist ratings, his stats at the bottom. So this is your standard sort of um, batter card. Now in the game, pitchers get uh, hitting cards as well. These, uh, I will show you these. These are the Cincinnati Reds uh, individualized pitcher hitting cards which you will use in the game as well. Same deal, they look different because there's a whole lot more strikeouts, but uh, the layout's the same. Okay, so let's continue with a few more rolls and um, walk through what the uh, batter card looks like and how you read it. Okay, so um, the ast so we'll start here on Tommy Davis. The asterisks tell you. In fact, let's let's zoom in a little bit for this. What do you say? We are focused here now uh, on Tommy Davis's card. If Tommy Davis rolls an eleven, then you have a single with a two base advance. The asterisks tell you how many bases the runners go. If he rolls a twelve, this means that there is a potential for an outfield assist. In this case, Tommy Davis hit a single to right field. He has a chance for an assist uh, from an outfielder. If the base there's a base runner on first, they can try and go to third, and there is an assist chance for that runner. How is that handled? Well, we come back to the run on arm chart that I showed you before. You have the simple version of how to throw that runner out, potentially. Or, or you can use the advanced run on arm chart as well, and it's described for you very easily. It's a very simple process. Lord knows other games don't have this, but you can also use the fast action cards to uh, resolve the runner trying to take the extra base as well with the assist opportunity from, an out, from the right fielder in this case, from the right fielder. All right, next is a fly out to right field. Number 14 is a ground ball to the second baseman with a double play opportunity. In that case, you would look at your runner advanced fielder's choice double play or double play question mark on ground outs, you'd roll a D6. Uh, and you would consult uh, this chart. So if you have, uh, what do we say? This is a ground ball to second base. So um, we'd roll our die and I rolled a one. We have a runner on second, let's say. Well, let's say first and second. Um, we have a ground ball to second base and we get the out at second here on this, okay? Uh, next is a fly ball to, or sorry, fly out to center field, assist possibility there, not an automatic advance. Ground ball to shortstop, this is an automatic double play if there's, if it's possible to get. SF7, fly out to left field, with a sacrifice fly if there is a runner on third. Um, number 22 is a ground ball to the third baseman with a double play chance. They're going to turn it on Tommy Davis here. For number 23, it is hit to center field. Now, this is a sacrifice fly if there's a runner on third. And then you're rolling your D6. 
because what this does is this is your injury rest rating. So if you're going to play with injury rest ratings, and the rules talk about maybe not doing that, if you're playing a, a series of some kind or a uh, just an exhibition game or something, but if you want to use them, you can. There's a system for it, and that's set up. You'd have to reroll your D6. 24 is hit back to the pitcher. Uh, you have a fielder's choice on that. The double play is not turned. For number 25, you roll a your um, D6s. Again, you have a triple chance um, from 11 to 14. So the T stands for triple. 14, 11 to 14, 11 on two D6s is as low as you can get, of course. So 11 to 14 gives you the triple. 15 to 23 gives you a hit by pitch. 24 and higher give you a line out. You would look at the uh, line out chart, which is here for you, or handled by the fast action cards. All right. Next uh, is a split reading. So if a left-handed pitcher is in and Jim O'Toole was a left-handed pitcher. If we rolled a 26 against Jim O'Toole, it would be a single with a two-base runner advance. Or if a right-hander was in, it would be a pop-up to third. So if you're asking yourself, okay, well, does this game deal with splits? This is one way that it does. Yes, it does have lefty-righty splits. All right, 31 to 36. Uh, an S question mark is a possible single. A D question mark is a possible double. The pitcher's hit number determines whether this is going to be anything. So the pitcher's hit number, if it falls between one and six, it's going to be a single. If it doesn't, it's going to be a line out. For 32, if it, the pitcher's hit number falls between a 2 and a 6, it's a single. If it doesn't, it's a ground ball with a double play chance to the shortstop. The green boxes, you're wondering what those are. In Davis's case, they are at 33 and 42. They give uh, stolen base opportunities using the automatic steal method or a jump opportunity if you are calling your own steals. Uh, but for the outcome, you have a single three to six on the pitcher's hit number, line out to right if it's not, and so on. So you, And down here is your double chance. So here is a double chance. If your hit number falls between two and six, it's a double. If it doesn't, it's a line out to left field. So you're not re-rolling. For 31 to 36, you are not re-rolling. You're only using the pitcher's hit numbers, which again are found here uh, for the Reds in this column. All your pitcher's hit numbers are right there. All right. Upper right corner, we talked about 41 already, 42, same kind of deal. You look at the walk number. If it's between two and six, you have a walk. If it's a, if it's not there, you have a ground ball to second with a double play chance. Everything else here is pretty self-explanatory. You have a P43 is a P4, which is a pop-out to some infield spot. It'll change a lot of this changes. If you're looking at Fairley's card here, for instance, if you look at Fairley's card, you'll see that there is some variance in the outcomes. But uh, there are some common spots too. Fairley drew a lot more walks, a ton more walks in his career than Tommy Davis did, of course. So there's going to be his on base percentage is higher. So you're going to see some more outs plugged into Davis's card. Um, 
Let's scoot down here to 51, 52, and 53. We talked about these before. If you roll a 51 here, E question mark, first base slash double play. Well, here is your error check chart and your procedures. So what this is telling you is uh, if the first baseman ch passes the error check, there could be a double play turned. For number 52, you have an automatic single. That's guaranteed. But you could, in addition to that, have an error on the first baseman. So you could have a single and a first base error. Notice on Fairley's card, it's a little bit different. It's a single, but a potential error on the center fielder. So it does change. If you want to change that up and for each batter re-roll to change who the error might be on, you can do that using this chart. Just as up above, you can do the error check change uh, by using this chart as well. And so you don't have to stick by what's on the card. Or you can if you'd like to. And if there's no single on a 52 roll, the single is always just a one base advance. 53 is the range check. So you gotta get to the kitchen. Uh, your AB rating, ground out to third. Um, if it's not an AB rating, it's a ground out to third. If it's um, something other than an AB rating, it's a single with a one base advance. That's managed for you here as well with the opportunity for you to change up and randomly assign who gets the range check. If you roll a 54, you're on to the field day charts. And the field day charts, uh, I showed you before, field day charts are resolved by uh, looking at the um, where the base runners are, and then uh, just sort of goes from there. These are what your field day charts look like, and you'll see that you have to see if your bases are empty, and then you can progress men on base, and then uh, wildest charts. This is like um, Fall Classic. And then finally, on your wildest chart, where the runners are located. All right. Uh, next, 55 through well, 55 is a possible um, flyout for some batters. Like Fairley, it's a possible home run uh, based on the pitcher's hit rating. Oh, I'm sorry, pitcher's home run rating. Uh, if it lands within this range, it's gone. You'll see Tommy Davis didn't have as much power as Ron Fairley, so um, he just has a fly out, sacrifice fly to left. Sacrifice fly if there's a runner on third. Numbers 56 to 65 are impacted by the pitcher's strikeout number. So you see there's constant involvement here of the pitcher, the defense, on the batter's cards. So you might look at it and say, well, you're just doing the batter's card. Well, yes, but there's all sorts of ways. And again, coming back to your team uh, chart that you've got here, there's all sorts of ways that defense is involved on the batter's card and the pitcher is involved. 56 to 65 are all pitcher strikeout number impacted. If the pitcher strikeout number doesn't fall within the range, you're given what the result is uh, to the right. Uh, finally, number 66 for some batters is a, like Junior Gilliam here gets a double. Uh, Davis has a home run. Uh, Fairley has a home run. Uh, some, pitch, some batters have, with less power, have I'll give you an example of that. Let me find, here's Bobby Richardson. Bobby Richardson just has a single with a two base advance on a 66 roll. All right, now. Uh, 
if you're doing the basic version of the game, uh, that's what you're looking at for Field Day Baseball. You're ready to roll. Um, so your sacrifice hit number, which is what you need for a sacrifice bunt, is there. In Davis's case, it's a five. Your hit and run letter is a C. His rating for stolen base is a 54, 52 with a J4. This gives you his stolen bases and his attempts in real life in the parenthetical during the season. So for Tommy Davis, he had 10 stolen bases and 14 attempts. So you look, you want a bunt and you got his five number. Uh, this is your bunt procedure. Hit and run, you want to hit and run with Tommy Davis, stay out of the double play. This is your hit and run rating, but, I'm sorry, your hit and run chart, but you need his, his letter rating, and in Tommy Davis's case, it's a C. And if you're gonna st steal a base, there is a process for that as well. And you're going to use those numbers for the jump or for the auto steal. Uh, you can use uh, the auto steal method as well. All right, that's your demo uh, for field day baseball. Walk through the instructions, the handful of charts that there are, but it's really not a chart driven game. It's a card-driven game, plus your chart of pitcher ratings and defensive ratings, and you're good to go. There are ballpark effects, there are splits for the game, and individual ratings for your strategy uh, options of steals, hit and run, and bunts. There are splits in the game. Um, that walks you through this in a week or so, two maybe. I'm backed up on demos, projects that I'm working on, but I will get a full game demo of Field Day on my channel. But in the meantime, I really encourage you to take a look at it. All the ordering information is in the description for this video. And if you haven't clicked like and subscribe to my videos, really need your help. So I'd appreciate your subscription. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has been instructive. And I'll see you soon with another video for a baseball, football, boxing, who knows, a sim coming to your doorstep soon. Have a great day. So long, everybody.